Hey guys, welcome back and happy Friday. So the week has gone <laughs> very quickly yet again, but that's always a good thing. It's a nice thing, but before we know it, it's often Monday. But I'm not trying to make you melancholy because you've still got the whole weekend to go. So what better way to start than a royal gossip video? So on the 14th of November, it will be King Charles's 75th birthday and he has put out an open invite which is natural he is still his son to his second son and Meghan to come over and bring the grandchildren over one grandchild I believe that King Charles is still yet to meet it would be nice to have a big portrait again released to the public of the king sitting alongside Queen Camilla and then having all of the grandchildren around them like we saw for several years with Queen Elizabeth and then Prince Philip. It's one of those nice ones to have and everyone likes seeing, you know, the kids, especially at that age, they're all shooting up and growing at such a rate. It's unbelievable. Unfortunately for King Charles, I wouldn't hold my breath. I cannot see Harry and Meghan bringing those children over. I actually can't see Meghan stepping foot in the UK because she doesn't need to. She's got everything she came for, which I will come to shortly. The fact is, Harry never bothered to bring the children to the UK to, you know, understand anything to do with their heritage, the royal family, Family, despite the fact they are now called prince and princess and more importantly he never brought the children over to see the queen which as we know now he knew that she was dying of cancer so if Charles is hoping that Harry is suddenly going to realize that this is actually important for the children as well as it is the adults and the relatives then I think he's got another thing coming as we know Harry is not the sharpest tool in the shed Despite everything that Harry and Meghan have done to the royal family, Charles is still very much hoping one day he might actually see his grandchildren and hopefully his son will stop trying to wage war on them. Again, it's something I'm not particularly hopeful of. Rumours are already that the royal family, again, a little bit worried the fact that Harry and Meghan's Hollywood dream is crumbling. It's already crumbled. It's, it's basically dissolved at the bottom of a cup. But with that, it means that they are going to go back to what they know and that will be bad in the royal family so I don't know I think the royal family need to not worry about it it's proved in the polls that Harry and Meghan are more unpopular than ever before yet the royal family are more popular so they really really do not need to concern themselves with what these two do or don't say plus they've proved themselves time and time again to not be exactly forthright with what's the word um the truth so as part of this invite it's said that King Charles has said no I'd love for you to come over but if the terms are what we're hearing, Harry is demanding an apology still, they can go fish. And quite rightly so. Harry is reportedly outraged yet again that his HRH was removed from the royal website and he felt it was done deliberately, that it was timed deliberately to overshadow his tour to Singapore and Tokyo. Totally believable, the amount of tantrums that Harry throws. And of course, he's always outraged over something. But it's a bit pot kettle black, given the amount of times that Harry and Meghan always try to overshadow other members of the royal family, their tours, with publicity stunts, even whilst they were supposed to be part of the same team when they were working royals. Now, speaking of Tokyo, there was one little nugget that I totally forgot to mention in my last video. When Harry was out there, you know, sometimes he says something and you're like, oh, can you not hear yourself? He said that as part of this, his philanthropy, he believes that my life is a charity, always has been, always will be. <laughs> I know which way Harry might have meant it, but it's certainly not the way I took it. He and Meghan kicked off on Oprah because Charles stopped giving them millions for doing nothing, for not even being working members of the royal family. They kicked off, despite being multi-millionaires between them, to say, my daddy cut me off financially. And not only that, with this Archwell Foundation, as we know, there's lots of dodgy things with them pushing money from company to company in shady tax haven, which is, well, I say shady, it is just a tax haven. You know, Delaware, where they don't have to give full um, detailed reports on what they're actually doing with the money. However, it was released by the media that Harry and Meghan donated only three Three million of other people's donations that were given to the foundation and decided to hang on to the rest. Now what they actually intend to do with that remaining money and then of course other money that is coming into the foundation for donations remains to be seen but I'm pretty sure it will go towards something like Archwell Productions or who knows Megan's next political ambitions because you need a lot of money behind you. There's no denying with this couple that charity starts at home. They're constantly on the grift whether it's using people's private jets, their holiday homes, 
homes, clothes, jewelry, anything that Megan can merch. Which brings me back to the previous video. New Calm, the people that did Megan's stress wrist patch, have actually denied that they are working alongside the Duchess. They did, however, say that they're really happy that she's obviously promoting it and lots of athletes and celebrities wear it and use the app and it's their prerogative if they wish to share it. But I do find that just a little bit hard to believe because it's funny that Megan was so obvious in promoting this product and then they launched the product on Instagram a matter of days later. It's too much of a coincidence for me. Perhaps the company were just concerned with the Markle curse or the public backlash. Let's be honest, Megan is quite a toxic brand and she does have that reverse Midas touch. So in more news that's come out to do with Megan Merchin is the fact that she has now finally sorted out the paperwork and she will be relaunching The Tig, which was her lifestyle vlog blog that she had before she met Harry. I have no problems with Megan starting up her Tig blog again. It was hers. It's possibly the only thing that Megan has that actually was hers before she met Harry. The money has got to keep coming in from somewhere. And as we know, their big contracts are drying up. The problem is with Megan launching her own lifestyle brand, they tend to a penny when it comes to A-list celebrities and a lot of them are actually liked. And also these big brands, like I just said, you know, Megan's quite toxic and they may be thinking we don't really want Megan to promote our stuff because we could end up with another Bud Light effect. But that being said, Megan has now got a new legion of fans. She's got the Sussex squad. I'm sure that they will quite happily spend their money buying anything that their queen decides to promote on her website. So she could be actually a bit more successful than what she was when she was just Rachel Zane in Suits. But this brings me back round to the whole, it was always a plan. Megan didn't give up anything. Megan never got rid of her business manager, her lawyer, her talent agent, who we saw two of them more recently at the basketball game where Harry tried to kiss Megan and she embarrassingly pushed him off on camera. Much like Megan never shipped her clothes over from Canada to the UK, it's because she never intended to stay. She never tried to truly adjust and as many members of the staff, the royal staff, courtiers and even family friends of the royal family who have spoken out, they said that she actively caused problems from day one. Think about it, it was all part of the plan. Meghan caused problems with absolutely everyone so everyone would then try and speak to Harry, get him to slow down. Harry, are you sure this is right? Of course with Harry it was a red flag to a bull and he speeded along with it. Everyone fell into Meghan's nuts narcissistic trap because the more that Meghan did stuff that potentially Harry wasn't seeing and the more people that went to Harry saying she's shouting at staff she's being awful he sees a sweet little angel that wouldn't hurt a fly no no Meghan would never do that and Meghan's like they hate me because I'm biracial <laughs> they hate me they hate me because of this they hate me because I'm poor they hate me because I'm an orphan Annie as we all know that's absolute bollocks. Megan was an incredibly privileged woman, courtesy of her father, growing up and she didn't want for anything even into her 20s. But hey, Megan likes to do that rags to riches storyline and the dumb prince fell for it. But of course, everyone was concerned about Harry and the fact that he is a prince of the United Kingdom. Many people tried to intervene, seeing that this marriage was going to be a disaster. And it worked in Meghan's favour. As I said, the more people tried to tell Harry, the more Harry went, no, everyone's wrong. This is me. I'm a big boy. I can make decisions for myself. And well, well, we've all seen the outcome of that, haven't we? The storyline that I love the most with Meghan with this though is people try and push, Meghan gave up everything for Harry. No, she didn't. She still got the same friends mostly that she had when she was in Canada. She had a rental home, a rental car. She didn't own anything. Now she's got a nine bedroom mansion. And if it's believed that they actually live there, but she's definitely gonna have something very, very plush. She's got armed security following her wherever she goes. She's got millions in the bank. She's got jewels. She's got designer clothes that she could only dream of. Of being able to keep when she was Rachel Zane and lots of jewels that belonged to the late Princess Diana. Meghan gave up nothing. <laughs> Meghan has gained everything. So in a game of what we, a lot of people like myself said that she was going to do, she's already done it and she's won. <laughs> 
But as for Harry, there might be a glimmer of hope that he has managed to ignite his one singular brain cell. Netflix have finally released the release date of Heart of Invictus, the documentary that Harry and Meghan were working on. But as it turns out, Meghan is not in a single part of the trailer for it. So this makes me believe there was a blind gossip going around you never know where to take a pinch of salt with these but it said that harry was removing all of the content of megan from the invictus games documentary this could be because like i've said suspicions are that they've already split and harry doesn't want her involved in it because as you can see career-wise they're going down very different paths megan's gone full circle to be an influencer and harry's still trying to pretend that he is a member of the royal family carrying out duties and service for charity and just because Meghan is obviously accompanying Harry to the games next month, it doesn't mean that this couple are fine and everything's hunky-dory between them. They might think that it shows a sign of unity for their brand, but I think most of us can see through it at this point. It's all about Meghan making the Invictus Games about Meghan. Now, speaking of actual sightings of the not-so-lately-elusive Duchess, she has been captured having some fun time with some girlfriends. And I have to say, Megan is looking incredibly youthful in this photograph. Now, you know me, I don't like body shaming. I don't agree with that. And I often say that Megan is an incredibly attractive woman. She can look absolutely beautiful. There is no denying it. But she does look incredibly smooth here. Her hands look smooth. Her face looks smooth. She's got little chubby cherub cheeks. And as we saw recently, Megan has lost so much weight. She's looking a little bit gaunt in the face. But her friends with her have also got very similar. You know, they've got the very, very smooth skin with these little chubby cheeks. There are filters out there that do this. So I do think that when Megan gets her friends or her colleagues, shall we say, one of them's her hairdresser, to release photographs, they do have edits on them. Whereas when we see Megan captured by the paparazzi, not so much and it's two very different Megans in the space of 48 hours. The only thing that does seem to be identical in both photographs is Megan is still not wearing her engagement ring which is definitely beginning to attract more media attention. But anyway let's go back to this photograph and it was posted by the highbrow hippie on Instagram. This is owned by Katie Lee, this is Katie Lee, who is a celebrity hair colorist who has promoted Megan before and she can count having other clients such as Sigourney Weaver, Julia Roberts, Brad Pitt to name a few. Now the other lady in the photograph is Cleo Wade. Her husband is an Oscar nominated filmmaker who wrote the X-Men films and helped produce Deadpool. Cleo herself is a poet, an artist, an activist and has four best-selling books that have been published. She is also a former stylist to Katy Perry. She's friends with people like Kamala Harris, Drew Barrymore and Nicole Ritchie, according to the Daily Mail. I can't think why Meghan would want to be friends with these two well-connected ladies, can you? It's clear that they're not old friends of hers because they weren't at her wedding, the baby shower, she, they've not been involved with archetypes making appearances. Now what I do find slightly amusing is this photograph of Meghan looking rather young, happy, youthful, having time with girlfriends. It's it's really smack bang in Harry's mini publicity boost that he's doing for Netflix. Then he had Centre Bali, Tokyo, and of course this has come up. Not quite content with the pap stroll that she did, with rumoured that she was at a Taylor Swift concert. Sorry, no one believes you but she felt that she had to do one more to compete. Obviously, Harry has been photographed having lots of fun with Nacho, but then of course there could be another reason why Meghan has released such a youthful, pretty picture of her, because Harry was photographed, or rather video footage was released, and it became a point of subject for many people, of the beautiful young lady who was staring at Harry with somewhat, shall we say, familiar goo-goo eyes that we have seen Meghan herself pull. Now, what makes this story even funnier is turns out that the young lady happens to be a former staff member and aide of Meghan's when she was a member of the royal family. A too brute. <laughs> Her name is Beth Herlihy and she also briefly had a stint at modelling and had an acting career and once starred as a stripper in Hollyoaks. Well, I have to say, Harry certainly does have a type, doesn't he? But, I mean, I'm not implying there's anything going on between them. For all I know, she could be married with children. I've not looked into her that deeply. But the look that she gave Harry did not go unnoticed by the Sussex squad, Meghan's fan base, and they are chomping at the bit for her. Now, it's not just because she got caught potentially looking at Harry with somewhat soft Bambi eyes. 
It's because she was a former staff member and she more recently congratulated Jason Nuff when he was given the position of Lieutenant of the Royal Victorian Order from Prince William. Jason Knuff, as some of you may or may not know, was their communication staff and he was the one that actually complained first about Meghan's bullying. He was the one that spearheaded it. He was the one that defended the staff. He was also the one that Harry and Meghan implied in their Netflix footage was the man that was behind the smear campaign and Prince William was behind it. Everyone was behind it because Meghan is, of course, innocent as the day she was born. So the fact that Beth did publicly congratulate Jason Nuff on being bestowed such an honour given the history between Jason and obviously the fallout with Harry and Meghan and the bullying allegations, I can only presume that it went down like a lead balloon. But as for this photograph being released, the timing is absolutely dynamite because it shows she was either jealous of the attention that Harry was getting, not necessarily from the young woman or Nacho, but the fact that Harry was getting a lot of media attention. These are projects that he was doing or things that he was attending without her. But one thing that I think is clearly obvious to most people is the fact that the media games, the war games for attention between the couple have officially started. One can't help but laugh at the prospect of it, really. So guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will be back. See you soon. Take care. Bye.